I am delighted to be back here with Dr. Martin Patrick. Um, fascinating. We were just talking a little bit about yourself, your journey, novelist, um, teacher, and what came across powerfully was your passion for, 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 for film and music and so on. Can you tell us what, what have we got here? What, what, what you have here are the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of films that I have recorded uh, over the years. And we are now, of course, in the age of DVD. But uh, when I started recording these, there were no DVDs, there was video. So I recorded them off air. There are approximately 3,000 films on these VCR cassettes. So this is somebody who's really serious about, <laughs> about film and so on. And, and, and when you're teaching people, do you feel, do you, could you, could you tell, could you tell those people who were going to make a success in, uh, from writing or from film in some way, shape or form? From nice their question. Very definitely. If, for example, someone exhibited their own passion, but there's an energy and truth in passion that tells me, I love this, I want this, I need this, this is me then you feel it. Right. When somebody, uh, they're doing their undergrad degree and is, oh, I can't be asked. I am not so interested in that particular student. Mm -hmm. I love students that bring some energy and some life and soul to their work. Well, how does that, um, what, tell us a little bit about the link between um, that then, when, between the, the, the teaching, the energy and so on, and the actual journey. Of being creative tell us a little bit about your experience about that because somebody's um let's say from picking up on your own story you're young you have a passion for something you perhaps find that you've also got the talent for that perhaps you study it um either formally as somebody did with your in your case or informally and then you find yourself okay. writing making film what's tell us a little bit about how then on it how on earth do you go on this journey of actually making something happen because it's so difficult so many people so many people also want to be stars or, or or playwrights or or singers performers filmmakers tell us what's your experience about actually you going have on that to journey really work for it if you are if your pathway and if your aim is to be famous but you don't do any work I mean the craft of writing. That means you have to study the masters. Mm -hmm. That means you have to go to the theater. That means you have to watch films. That means you have to read books. Um, behind you are hundreds of books. On, on the shelves are thousands of uh, films. Downstairs are hundreds and hundreds of DVDs. There are hundreds of other books downstairs. My house is filled with them. Yes. I don't have to fake anything. I don't have to... When somebody meets me, whether I've gone in for funding for a particular project, such as you know, I'm trying to put on a play, and then someone tells me that this isn't a black play because it's against tradition, and then I'm able to explain to them that anything that I write is a play about black British people, um, about um, uh, people who come from the Caribbean and they've made their lives here, that is authentic. I know the meaning of authenticity because I live it. Right. I am living in a black body. And this means that I am consciously aware of how I am read by people. So it's really interesting then, there's a, a really interesting link between this passion for doing what you're doing and then th th what you're pointing us to is this thing about then that artist knowing what their own thing, how, how I would describe it, knowing what their own magic w is, what, what, what it is that they are what they possess, they've got to know that fact, because often the whole process, I guess, of being a creative can be not necessarily devalued, but people may feel, find themselves in some kind of um, rat race and not necessarily know their own power, their own value. Okay, so, so, so what do you is think important, that's... for example, is that you must know your social history. That is what you're writing about. Um, you're writing about your, the world that you live in, you're writing about the world that you come from, you're writing about things that you know. I have met people in uh, organizations who go on a 10-week awareness course um, about a given subject, uh, such as um, uh, uh, Black British, um, uh, African heritage, and their 10-week awareness course cannot give them the knowledge that I have mm. about the life that I've lived. 
So when you explain that, there are ways in which you convey that information. All of this is the authority of your voice. It is the authority of every word that you write. If you are real, if you are authentic, if you are qualified, know your background, know your history, know what's happening right now, do the work. When anyone says to you, oh, um, this is not traditional, then you actually have to explain mm. to them how you're changing tradition mm. because things evolve. Mm. And I think that is very much a part of my creative process. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's a lovely moment maybe for us to talk a little bit about your book, which I wonder if you'll reach for. We've got your book here. Um, Certainly. Your, 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 your new book, um, um, Love Both Ways. Now, um, Tell us in a nutshell a little bit about this book. I wonder if you hold it up a little bit for the camera first. Most certainly. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about um, about 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 the book, about this particular book. Okay, Love Both Ways is a story about two recently divorced fathers. They meet at a support group and fall spiritually and passionately in love. This means, for example, that. Um, one of the fathers is Italian, the other is um, um, African-Caribbean, and they actually are going to change their families because of who they are, because of their... They are moving into a life of confidence and belief in themselves instead of hiding. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to tell a story about two men who change their lives rather than two men that have secret passions. They are married and they are carrying on. There's an affair, there's something else. I wanted the journey of their lives to be honest with their ex-wives, with their children and with their parents. And so for me, this is a very this is a very exciting novel to talk about a new romance between um, an Italian-born Brit and a uh, man who is from a Nigerian and Caribbean, Jamaican um, uh, heritage, who is born here in Britain, who is educated in Britain, who is from a very, very famous family, and how he finds the nerve, the guts, the spirits. Um, the will to tell his own truth to his son and his family and change everything about himself. And that to me was the compelling part of writing this novel. I mean, I think what's fascinating, one of the things that's fascinating about hearing that is I can hear the link between that as a novelist and the playwright, because pl pl uh, plays, they require drama, storytelling, mm -hmm. boldness and so on. I just wonder, um, I'm just mindful uh, as we begin to um, um, I begin to close. I want to talk about a couple of things. The cu what I love about that, there's a story that brought challenge and requires courage. And it made me think again about the story of anybody who's a creative. Do you find that people who are really, really good creatives are always in some way bold and challenging? Do you feel that no. um, in terms of... Uh, but, no. No. But should, we, should, should, should creatives always be you bold and challenging? I'm curious. Think about, as a creative mm -hmm. artist, in whatever medium, you have to remember also that you are a businesswoman mm -hmm. or are you a businessman. Mm -hmm. You are building and creating a business. Mm -hmm. So understand what you have to do with your creative production mm -hmm. and how to go into business, how to write a script and sell it, how to write a novel and get it published, um, how to be an actor and right. go about getting work. Right, this you is really interesting. You have to know these things. Right, and it's interesting, isn't it? Because I guess that sometimes people will be taught and they'll, they'll, you know, they've got passion. The passion's often there, isn't it? People go off and often study. But the business side of these things, people may not actually... Very often they don't, don't prepare themselves, themselves for it. Um, fortunately, when I was um, preparing my final year students at university and trying to get them to identify their transferable skills. Um, it was as much a reminder to myself that whilst I was a principal lecturer at university teaching students cultural studies, drama studies and film studies, um, I had stopped writing at that point in time. And I knew that I wanted to return to that mm. because that was my energy, that's my soul. 
and as I was teaching them I was reminding myself and it's one of the reasons that when the department was closed and um, the arts and media department was closed and the staff were made redundant and I had to think about my transferable skills. What was I going to do? How was I going to do it? What was to become of me? Mm -hmm. And I decided instead of just teaching and no longer writing, that I would return to writing because the passion was burning so, so fervently within me that I was going to return to that, write my novels and find a way of not just selling it, but making it a part of my business. Right. And that would also mean that I would have the idea for the great new writers. Uh, on that, just before we close, could you tell us just a little bit about the, your, the, 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 the idea about the, um, the, the great, great new writers? And could, could you just tell us a little bit about, about that and what your, what your aim is? And With the great new writers, what my intent is, is to support new aspiring black, Asian and LBG, LGBT writers. Um, I want to give them the courage and let them know they have the right to write. Mm -hmm. I want them to understand the story that they want to tell. Publishers will tell you that I don't know where the market is. Mm. I'm not quite sure of the audience. You must not listen to that. You must write that novel. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, yes. Because we now live in an age of self-publishing. Mm. Never let an agent tell you you don't have the authority, the spirit, the knowledge to write that novel because an agent told me, I love your story, not this particular novel, mm. but something else. If only the characters weren't black, I could sell it for you. Mm. And if I was incredibly sensitive as an artist, I would have given up. Nothing makes me give up. Nothing. Yeah. So, so uh, I mean, it would be really nice to hear just so final. I mean, here's uh, uh, what's what really strikes me is that passion, um, uh, learning your craft, immersing yourself with the craft, becoming business savvy, knowing what your skills and your talents are, mm -hmm. um, and and then being fervent and knowing that actually there might be some ups and downs along the way, or oh, you might yes. have at, at different moments. Could you mean, would just, if you would just give, if you could only give three tips to anybody who, um, who wanted to be a creative, um, either a writer, playwright or, or anything else, what would be your, your, your three tips for them, for their, for their career? I would suggest that, um, they, undertake a course around business studies. Mm -hmm. And something like a Prince too is very useful. Um, I would suggest that they m actively go about meeting other creative people in business mm -hmm. and talk to them as a designer, mm -hmm. as, an, as, as a designer, an architect, um, mm -hmm. a fashion designer, mm -hmm. a writer, or whomever you are. Um, Meet them, talk to them, understand something about their business. Talk about your own passion. People will share ideas with you if they can feel, they sense that your interest in your creative energy and vision is as passionate and can all-consuming as their own. Um, and I would very definitely say, every single day, you have to work on it. Mm -hmm. Write a little bit every day. Mm -hmm. You can write something in the morning and you can do some business studies in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. But you actually have to learn your craft and your business. Go to network events, go to workshops, understand the business that you're in and then you'll know how to do business. Well, wonderful. Um, I, well, I, I want to close by wishing you all the best with the with the with the fantastic new book mm -hmm. i'm really excited um about that for you um thank you so much for sharing so richly about your journey and if people are trying to find you or to find um the, either you personally or to find the great new writers um how can they find you well they can go online and um if you just type in the great new writers i could say www.greatnewwriters.com <laughs> and bedding you'll be on my page um, there are blogs on my page about writers who I support. Um, there are blogs on my page about um, the up-and-coming event for my new novel. Um, so there's information about things that I think are important in becoming a professional. I blog about that and I engage with other people who know about those things. 
Wow, well, that's fantastic. Well, Dr. Martin Patrick, wishing, wishing you all the best with the book and with the great new writers. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you very much for inviting us to, into your home. Surely. Take good care.